Hello there, good morning. Um, I wasn't expecting to be doing today's vlog, but uh, sometimes circumstances change. And so I'm just simply going to read to you this morning from the book Reading Between the Lines by Glenn Scrivener as we enter this Holy Week. So we're thinking this morning from Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 to 44. And I'm just going to encourage you to press pause on this video, go away and read those verses, and then come back. Great, I hope you've managed to read those verses uh, over your morning coffee or whatever. We're thinking about the crown of thorns. And great, Glenn Scrivener writes the following. What does it mean for Jesus to be our Redeemer? Some people have a gospel that depicts the Son of God swooping down to snatch a lucky few from damnation. Souls are saved and saved out of the world into another realm. The world itself can sink into hell the chosen ones have chosen a life raft, and these chosen can't wait to escape. But Jesus does not operate according to this playbook. He comes into the world and anchors himself to this reality. He earths himself into our flesh. He takes our humanity to himself forever. More than this, he takes our sufferings to himself, bearing our sorrows and carrying our griefs. Isaiah 53 verse 4. He takes our sins to himself. The iniquity of us all is laid upon him at the cross. Isaiah 53 verse 6. And more than this, he takes our curse on, onto himself, lifted up on a tree to bear the reproach that we all deserve. Galatians 3 13. Jesus does not ignore suffering, sin and curse, and he doesn't merely blast it to oblivion with some glory gun. He takes it to himself, he owns it, and then puts it to death in his own body. The head of creation dives into this pit of our own making to take on the darkness in person. And there's no better symbol for this than the crown of thorns he wears. What do thorns mean in the Bible? Thorns are the very emblem of the curse. As soon as Adam sinned, the Lord told him, the ground will produce thorns and thistles for you. Genesis 3, verse 18. These thorns are the polar opposite of the fruitfulness for which the earth is intended. And they're the opposite of the fruitfulness God's people are meant for. While Israel is supposed to be a fruitful vine, Isaiah 5 tells us that briars and thorns come up instead. Jesus uses the same imagery in his teaching. When speaking about the false prophets of his day, in Matthew 7, 16, he says, Do you pick grapes from thorn bushes? That is, will you find the life of God in a fraudulent people? In Matthew 13, we hear about thorns choking the fruitfulness of the word. In 2 Corinthians 12, Paul speaks of thorns as an intense pain that accompanies the spreading of the gospel. Thorns, then, are anti-life, anti-gospel, anti-creation. And what does Jesus do? He dives headlong into the thorn bush. He enters into the fruitless, lifeless, painless, or painful, rather, curse of this world. Through this redemptive act, a crown of thorns is twisted and he wears it with pride. Christ's reign does not ignore the thorns or includes them and takes them up into his redemptive purposes. He turns curses into crowns and a tree intended for death is turned into the very tree of life. Here is a cosmic redemption. As we're thinking about thorns today, bring to mind the thorns in your life. What regrets do you nurse? How many what-ifs do you wonder about? Have you suffered from foolish, sinful or unfortunate twists of fate? Do you consider that now your life is condemned to God's second best, third best, 57th best? Look again to Christ. He turns curses into crowns. Whatever thorns you experience, Christ is taking them and twisting them further. He's not discarding them. He's not actually straightening them, he's twisting them into a crown. He's pushing on through the curse, through the cross, 
to resurrection blessings. But in these blessings, the curses are not forgotten. They are included. They are glorified as curses become crowns. There is no pain, no weakness, no fruitlessness, no sin that Jesus does not take up into his purposes and turn to greater glory. I'm not sure how he will do it in your life, but as we look at the cross, we cannot doubt that he will do it. He is the one who turns day aside into glory. He really is the redeemer of the world. No matter how painful the thorns might be, we can trust the one who makes them his crown. Amen. That's a blessing to me. I hope it is to you this Easter week. May God bless you. See you next time.